Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the VPN service that's built into OS X Server. Now VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and it's basically a tunneling protocol that allows you to connect to your server from a remote location and then have the information passed to and from uh, your remote machine encrypted so that it's safe and nobody can get access to it. Uh, what it also does is it allows you to appear as if you're on your local network so it'll give you access to the services and things that you normally would be able to access if you were in your home network. Now it only works uh, for a dot .private or a dot .com uh, type of a setup and so if you've been following my series I talked to you about the differences between those and how to set that up. Uh, a .com uh, is usually a registered domain name that allows you to access all of your services remotely. And if you've got a dot .private, that means that it's not registered anywhere on the Internet, but it does allow you to get access to your services remotely if you use this VPN service. If you're using a dot .local, uh, it's not going to work for you, and you're going to need to make the changeover in the Server tab uh, to make it a dot .private at least or get a registered domain name. Now before we talk uh, a little more in depth about how to set this up, I do want to let you know that while it does, VPN does allow you to appear like you're on your local network, uh, the Bonjour services do not work. So normally when you're on your local network, you have one of your Macs uh, signed into your server, you'll see in the Finder sidebar, you know, the server will show up as well as any file shares and things that you've got, and those access things will be in the sidebar of the Finder. With VPN, since Bonjour doesn't work, that's Bonjour that's making that happen, uh, I would VPN into my server, but then I would still have to use uh, some of the file sharing techniques that I shared in the file sharing screencast to connect to my file shares. You know, I'd have to use the Go Connect to Server AFP with my server's name in order to connect to those file shares just like I would uh, remotely in any other service. So just wanted to let you know that that's the case because a lot of people get confused about that and wonder why stuff just isn't showing in the Finder sidebar and that's why that Bonjour protocol just doesn't work over VPN. So with that in mind let's go ahead and take a look at the service here. So this is the VPN service and as you can see the status is offline because we haven't turned on the service yet. Uh, like all of the services built into OS X Server, you, know, you can set your permissions for the service right here. Uh, if I wanted to edit that right now, I've allowed connections for all users. I could specify only some users if I wanted to, and for all networks, and I could just say private or only some networks if I wanted to limit that. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to leave that alone because I want it available to everyone. Now down here I can configure the VPN for, and you notice if I just uh, click on this, I've got L2TP and then I've got one that includes that and a PPTP. Uh, well let me explain what uh, both of those mean, because uh, they're both uh, basically tunneling protocols. Uh, L2TP stands for Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol, and that's the newer protocol that VPN uses, and so it's more up to date. And then we have the, uh, the PPTP stands for Point to Point, tunneling protocol and that's the older protocol uh, that was used before and if you've got an older Mac or something like that you might want to use that and include both of these it's up to you uh, but for our purposes here we're just going to use the newer protocol because uh, I'm not concerned with using the other one now down here you'll see your VPN host name and you'll see I've got my host name here with the green dot so that means that uh, everything's configured properly for me to be able to use the VPN service. Uh, now for those of you with a dot .private address as we're going to see uh, later uh, when you actually connect to your VPN service you're going to actually use your public IP address not uh, just this here. Uh, not, not your dot .private address because it's not registered anywhere on the internet. Uh, but anyways that should be configured for you already if we did all the configurations right with the server tab. Now down below is a shared secret now the shared secret um, basically is uh, just another password and it's basically put in once and then ser uh, server tests it against the remote machine to make sure that shared secret is there so that that way it makes sure that, that the uh, server that you're trying to connect to is who it says it is. And so it's just another layer of security. Uh, you'll have a default one that's put in there. Uh, you'll need to change that and uh, make it a shared secret that you can put in there. Uh, if you want to see it, you just uh, click on this Show Shared Secret box and then it'll show you what you've put in there. Uh, but like I said, I'd recommend definitely making sure that you change that uh, to something else so that it's not just the default that's there. 
Now down here, you can see we've got uh, client addresses. You can see a 10 there for L2TP. And if I just click on edit addresses, you can see that it says uh, assign this number of addresses that starts at uh, this particular address range here. And you can see if I hover over this, you can see it'll give me an address range there and that's 10 uh, addresses out. Now it's important that you get this part set up correctly because this these are local IP addresses that your server is going to assign to your machines that are connecting to the VPN. Uh, so you want to make sure this is out of the range of what your router would normally assign inside your local network so that it's not giving two addresses to the same thing. So if I just come in here, let me just show you real quick on the airport utility. Uh, this is the airport utility here, and you notice my DHCP range is from 1.2 to 1.200. So I'd want to make sure that my VPN range is outside of this range here. So anything uh, you know 201 and greater would be fine uh, to assign in there. And so what I usually do is just come out a little further than that. That's why I've got 224 uh, to make that work so that it's uh, easier to, uh, to do there. So let me show you here. Let's go back to the server app. Pull that back up. So you can see we're at 224, so that's where I want to be in that particular range. And you can go up or down with how many addresses you want to assign. It's up to you on how many clients you think will be assigned at the same time. I'm just going to click Cancel because I didn't change anything there. Uh, down here you have your DNS settings, and so you're going to have two, uh, you can edit your DNS settings. Notice I've got two DNS servers, and I've got these uh, search domains. Uh, this is basically going to be read off of your server itself. Uh, this 10.0.1.3 is my server itself. You'll want that there in the first slot. And then this is actually an open DNS address uh, that I use on my local network. And so I want to go ahead and assign that as well because I've got some settings on there that limit certain access to things and such uh, for my family. And then this is just the default search domain that shows up uh, on my server. In fact, I'll show you that. Uh, if you go into System Preferences, it's just defaulting to what's here. Here's the IP address. Uh, here's uh, for DNS right here. See the two DNS addresses, and there's the search domains there. It's just defaulting to that, and that's also uh, is what's on the uh, airport utility as well. Let's come back in here. So I'm going to leave those alone, but you can add however many addresses you want. So I'm just going to say cancel and leave that there. Down here are routes, and I can edit these routes. And this I would use if I've got maybe multiple servers uh, on my network or computers, then I can add these IP addresses, subnet mask, and network types so that I've got those uh, routing through one another if I need to set that up. Again, a little mo bit more for uh, complex situations where you're in a, uh, you know, maybe in a more business-oriented uh, situation, but just wanted to let you know that that's here as well. Let's go ahead and cancel that. Now, down below here, one thing I do want to show you is you can uh, save a configuration protocol. In fact, if I just say save profile, It'll create this mobile configuration protocol that I could then email to my clients, have them click on it, and just accept it, and it will automatically install all of the server configuration elements uh, for VPN. I'm going to do it manually, but I just wanted to show you that there is a super easy way to do it just by having this sent uh, to your clients. So I'm just going to cancel that. So now that I've got everything set and ready to go, let's go ahead and start the service. I'm just going to throw the switch here. And it's going to give me this warning. It's just going to say, hey, allowing access is going to configure the base station so that the service can be accessed uh, from the internet, and it might restart the base station. And so basically, it's just telling me that it's going to open the necessary ports that I need uh, to make that service work, which I'm going to say allow. And I'll put those things on there for you. And so now the service is live. You can see it's, uh, it's available, it's on, it's determining reachability right now. Um, you can see I've got the green light here, and eventually this will turn. Uh, one thing on, on reachability is sometimes, depending on Apple's servers, it may not show right away that the reachability is correct or not. Uh, you may just have to keep trying that out and running that uh, just to see if it comes through, but I haven't found that it's always accurate. Uh, there we go. We can see it is reachable over the Internet at my address there, so the test did come through. So now that I've set up VPN, let me go over to a client, and I'll show you how to set this up on a client machine. Okay, so here we are over on my client machine. And so to set up VPN, you want to go into System Preferences here, and you want to go to the Network tab. Now you can see here I've got all my different network connections. You can see my Wi-Fi and everything set up there. And so what I want to do is just come down here and hit the plus to create a new service. And we're going to go to this drop down here and we're going to select VPN. And then within VPN, we just want to go ahead and select uh, this L2TP over IPsec. And you can see it's changed it there. And I'm just going to change the name in here 
to make that, uh, let's just say server. And so that'll be in there. We're going to say create, and that just gives me my, my name. You can see now I've got the VPN service over here uh, for server. Uh, I could add a configuration file if I wanted to do that. In our case, I'm going to leave it at default. Here's where you put in your server address. And so for me, I'm going to put in the name of my server like this. Um, but if you have a .private address, you're going to want to put in a uh, your public IP address number right there. Uh, if you don't know what your public IP is, you can find it in the airport utility. Or if you just uh, pull up a web browser on your server and just do a Google search for what is my IP, it will give you your public IP. Uh, from there, we're going to put in our account name. So this will be the short name of your account. And then we've got authentication settings. So let's just click on that. And we're going to put in the password of the user who is using that account. Okay, I put that in there. And then down here, we're going to put in the shared secret that you created on the server app uh, for the VPN service that we just talked about. So let me put that in here. Okay, once I have that in there, I just go ahead and click on OK. And so now I've got that all set up and ready to go. Uh, there is the advanced area here where if I wanted to, I could come in and uh, send all traffic over VPN connection if I wanted to do that. Uh, I just wanted to show you that that's there. I'm just going to cancel it. And then you just click Apply uh, to add the service. And you can see I've now uh, applied it. You can see it's not connected. I've got the yellow light. Uh, I usually do check this Show VPN Status in a Menu Bar. You get this little box up here. If I just click on that, uh, what it will do is it will allow me to connect to the server directly right from here or disconnect from here. So let's go ahead and test the service. I'll just click it in here. We're going to say Connect. And so you can see it's connecting to the service right now. You can see it's also doing it up here uh, on the top bar. And you can see now I'm connected and it's sending and receiving data. It shows me that on the bars over here. It shows the IP address I was given. Notice it's the first address in the series that I was give, uh, that I set up in the server app. And it shows me how long uh, I've been connected. And then over here, of course, you can see it's a green light. So that's how you set up the VPN service. Again, to disconnect, I can just uh, click disconnect from here. Or again, if I just came up here, I could say disconnect from here. So I don't have to have the system preferences open. And now you can see it's disconnected. So that's all I have uh, for this week on VPN. Uh, hopefully that, uh, that helps you out. So that's all we have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.